Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. We have a lot to cover today, so right now, if it's possible, get your Bible open and join me. We are working our way through the book of Leviticus. We're finding some very practical, usable things here. But right now, my Bible is open to Leviticus chapter 10. Please come here and join me if that's at all possible. Also, get something on which you can jot some notes. This is a critical critical portion of the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 10. If you're driving your car, doing some other task where you cannot have your Bible open, we will make this teaching time here to be very clear, very practical. I'll read the Word of God with clarity. That's incumbent upon me as the Bible teacher today. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. It's one of the tracts that people either really, really like or really, really don't like, and I'll tell you why here in just a moment. But let me lead into our study time this way. What we have in front of us today here in Leviticus chapter 10 is a very sobering episode to of Aaron's sons are going to die here in Leviticus 10. They're going to die in the very first day of their new role as being priests. And what exactly their actions were, we cannot dogmatically state, but it was such that God himself kills these two men. Now, two other places in the Word of God should come immediately to our minds. They are Joshua 7 and Acts chapter 5. Over in Joshua 7, that's where Achan took the stuff from the city of Jericho, and he and his family were executed. In the book of Acts chapter 5, that husband and wife, Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the apostles, and guess what? God killed them. In all three places, here in Leviticus 10, Joshua 7, and Acts 5, these are places where a new era of God's work was beginning. In Joshua 7, the promised land was just then being entered. In Acts 5, the church age was beginning. Here in Leviticus 10, the epoch of the law period was beginning. And God demonstrates how important each of these new eras were by displaying how seriously he views disobedience to his revealed will. In all three places, the fear of God is heightened among the people, and that's never a bad thing. So, if you're ready, with great carefulness, I invite you to step with me into Leviticus 10, but be careful, there's fire here. Well, I mentioned a moment ago a gospel tract. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is a short written presentation of the Word of God, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. These are gospel tools, evangelism tools, to help us spread the gospel. The one in my hand right now is entitled, It's Free. It is free. I said it's one that either people really like or they don't like, and here's why. Almost all of our tracts are written in paragraph form, but this one is not. This gospel tract is so valuable because if you're trying to share the gospel with somebody and you're trying to lay out clearly for them that salvation is a free gift and that gift is only found in Jesus Christ, this is a great tool when sharing the gospel one-on-one with a lost person. Because you see, there's no paragraphs, but there is a lot of Bible verses verses. On the left-hand side of this track as it's open, the question is this, what is free? The answer is salvation. And there's five verses. On the right-hand side of the track, it asks, where can I find it? Answer in God's risen son. And there's four Bible verses. And the back panel clearly lays out how to receive Christ as Savior. Now, I use this track a lot. 
If you are one who loves to tell the gospel one-on-one, you're going to like this track. It's one of over 40 tracks in a sample packet I would love to put into your hand. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known three ways by which you can contact us. Do that. Give us your name and mailing address. It will send a free sample packet to you. Or you can go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org. And by the way, I've been emphasizing here recently that we are in the process of getting ready to print 1.3 million gospel tracts again inside the country of Pakistan. Every time we print these large amounts, brother, sister, listen, every time we do this, thousands of people come to Christ. I mean that. Thousands come to Christ. The problem is it cost me $22,000 to do that. Now, friend, if you'd like to help us, we could sure use your help. Help us share the gospel in the Muslim country of Pakistan. There's some great servants ready to use the tools that we want to put into their hands. Well, if your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 10, beginning at verse 1, here's what the Bible says. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of him, them, his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This it is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. I'm going now down to verse 6. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, those are his other two sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord had kindled. And we're told this in the middle of verse 7, For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. I'm going to stop right there. Now, chapter 8, chapter 8 of Leviticus gives us the consecration of the priest. Chapter 9 gives us the commencement of the priesthood. But now chapter 10 gives us the calamity when there's priestly abuse. Did you see the outline? Chapter 8, consecration. Chapter 9, commencement. Now chapter 10, calamity. Chapter 10 has three basic sections. Here is my quick outline for it. I'm going to give all three parts right one after the other. Verses 1 through 7 talks about strange fire, strange fire. Then verses 8 through 11 talk about strong drink forbidden, strong drink forbidden. And then lastly, verses 12 through 20, the idea of stay focused on the priesthood, stay focused. Now, the part of chapter 10, which causes a lot of believers to debate about, is that second section there where God speaks directly to Aaron. And he says, I'm beginning to read now here out of verse nine, he says, do not drink wine or strong drink thou or thy sons and so on. This prohibition is given in the context of chapter 10 of the sinful actions of the two oldest sons that were killed. And it seems best to say that this, the two men, Nadab and Abihu, had evidently come under the influence of strong drink. That, again, in the context, seems to be why they did whatever it was they did. And verses 8 through 11 makes two basic points about this whole issue of being under the control of strong drink. In verse 10, the priests were to have spiritual discernment about what was holy and what was not holy. Then also, verse 11 says that the priests were to be apt to disciple the people of God in the things of God. And strong drink prohibits those two activities from happening in a godly way. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that, but I want to bring you back to the opening seven verses here, the section I call the strange fire. Notice some basic facts, four of them at all. Notice the D words for each one. Fact number one is this, the day, the day this happened, this fire fell and Nadab and Abihu were killed. 
If you go and read on in verses 12 and 16 of the chapter, you're going to find that this event happened on the very first day of their priesthood, the day described back in chapter 9. On the, verse, on the very first day of their priestly work, Nadab and Abihu disobeyed God. All exactly they did, we cannot fully detail because it's not detailed for us here. But it's called strange fire. They clearly desecrated this worship by using wrong materials in the incense. And again, drunkenness seems to have played a role here. But what's fact number two? Fact number two is the disrespect chapter 9, the very last verse of chapter 9, we find everybody there on their faces at the fire of God falling due to proper worship. But while everybody else was on their faces in godly awe, Nadab and Abihu were getting drunk. Their hearts were not focused on God. Fact number three, the death these men died. God purified his his priesthood, and once more fire fell. But here, this fire did not glorify God. It was done out of guiltiness. And the last fact, fact number four, the denial. God denies Aaron and his two remaining sons to even attend the funeral for Nadab and Abihu. God denies them even the privilege of showing normal grief for their two dead sons here. And why not? Well, verse 3 says that the men, these men, Aaron and his two living sons, were sanctified unto the Lord. That first day was a very unique day for them being the priests of God. But then in verse 7, we're told that the anointing oil was on Aaron and his two living sons. This oil was a symbol of life, not death. And this oil was a very special and sacred kind of oil. It was not allowed to come into contact with dead bodies. Now, at this moment, Aaron had a very critical decision to make, a hard decision. His two living sons were watching their dad to see what would he do. Would Aaron be a dad first and a priest second, or would he be God's high priest first and a dad second? Now, friend, you may not like the way I just phrased this, but it's exactly where Aaron found himself. His two older sons had openly defied, dishonored, defiled, and and disobeyed God. He had either to agree with God's judgment on them or let human grief and human emotion control his mind and actions at that point. Oh, my friend, as you prepare to go to church this coming Lord's Day, pray for your pastor. Our God is a consuming fire, Hebrews 12 says. James 4 says that God takes a harsh look on those who teach his word and do it wrongly. Let there not be many masters, many teachers, it says there. You and I better pray for our pastors as they step into the pulpit that, first of all, the anointing oil of the Spirit of God is poured out mightily on our pastors. And then we need to pray that they not be involved in anything at all that mires and mucks up the calling to declare the word of God out of a holy life. If you think you're called to gospel ministry, that's a great thing. But this is a serious chapter for God's gospel service. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.